my name is Chris Lipchuk. I'm the executive sous chef at the Prince of Wales in Niagara on the Lake. Uh, I've been with Vintage now for 16 plus years, and I the company has been great. So with stuffing, a lot of people think it has to be put in a bird. It does not. Especially in the restaurant industry, you can, for health reasons, we cannot put stuffing in a bird because of all the contaminations that can happen. We do not want to get anybody sick. So we always have to make it separate in our own pan away from the turkey so there's no cross contamination. And for my turkey stuffing, well, it's not even turkey in it, it's just stuffing. Your main ingredients are your butter, your onion, garlic, celery, carrots sage if you want to add other ingredients into it you can if you want to add some people add bacon into it other people add some other veggies but i just do the basics i also well before i used to do it a lot finer i used to use a uh, the robocook machine a food processor to make it to try to hide the veggies for my kids because <laughs> a lot of kids don't like the veggies but now my kids are getting older and they really enjoy eating the stuffing. Even my son, the other last week I made some, he started to help me and was cutting the celery and just started eating all the veggies as I was making it. And he has a neuro um, diversion um, uh, diagnosis. So for him to, to eat something that's not within his like specific palate, we're, we're really grateful for that. Mm -hmm. So with prepping it, for myself, it doesn't take long for me to do it since I've been in the industry for so long. Uh, I usually start cooking my whole Christmas dinner after I finish work at four o'clock and then I serve it by six o'clock at home. So for me, it's very easy. A lot of, there was a few questions that people asked, how far in advance can you make it? You can make your stuffing a few days ahead of time and just not bake it yet. And then when it comes to the day of uh, Christmas or Thanksgiving or ever, whenever you, you want to use it, you can then bake it in the oven. So you can prepare all the ingredients, what we're going to do today, and just hold it off. And you can even freeze it if you want, and then pull it out a day before so it thaws, and then you can then cook it in the oven after that. And so another question that we that was asked was if the stuffing or how do I cook the stuffing so it isn't so wet? And how long do you cook it for? Well, for that, it all depends on how much liquid you put into it and how big or deep a container you have. If you have a smaller, deeper container and you try to bake it, your in middle part of your stuffing is always going to be wet. And then your outside is going to be dark and burnt and you'll never have a consistent cook on it. To have a better cook, you should have a shallower, bigger pan that's longer and wider. So that way you have a more even cook on your stuffing or anything else that you're actually cooking too. Uh, or if it's still too wet, you might just have to cut back on the amount of liquid or butter or uh, fat that you put into it because that might be just making it too wet. And another question that was asked was, can it be made vegan? Myself, I have never had to make it vegan, but you can substitute the butter for a vegan margarine that we actually use at the hotel also. It, you can buy it at Costco. And then for the milk product portion of it, sorry, you can substitute any plant-based uh, dairy product for it. So almond milk, soy milk, whatever type of flavor you would prefer, you can add that into it in place of the dairy for that. All right, so I have already preheated my oven to 375 just to get it started. I am gonna start just by cubing up my butter and putting it into the saute pan. I use, for one loaf of bread, I use about half a pound of butter. I'm not uh, afraid of using the dairy products. And 
and it's easier to have it diced up than having one big lump and then you'll end up starting to burn your butter before it's even fully melted yet. If the camera person isn't uh, <laughs> doing a good job, then just let me know and I'll move, I'll maneuver it around. I'm trying. <laughs> and for the onion, celery, garlic, like I said, you can make it really fine. You can make it a little bit bigger. It all depends on your own texture or if you have somebody that's a little more pickier and doesn't like their veggies, the smaller it is, the easier it is to hide especially if there's kids or grandkids around that don't like veggies. I'm gonna just chop up my onions and my garlic, and then I'm gonna work on my celery and carrots. And for the carrots, you can use any type of carrot you would like. Uh, if you wanna use like even an heirloom carrot, like the colored purple carrots or anything. The only downside to using those ones is it will change the color of your stuffing. If you use the darker ones, it'll make it a very dark purple on it. But since I have children in the house and they love carrots, we get the pre-peeled little carrots so they can take them to school. So I am using those today. And I usually use about three cloves of garlic and one white onion in my recipe. What are you up? I'm just chopping up my garlic first. Then I'm going to work on my onion. If anyone has any questions, you're more than welcome to ask. Somebody try to do something? No. Should our bread be drying out? Uh, no, the bread, I usually just uh, have it semi, well, because we buy so much bread that it's semi-frozen, so it's easier to cut, but it doesn't have to be dry. It can be right out of the bag, soft, but if, if it's dry, like very dry bread, then you're going to have to add more liquid after to it to help make it soft. Okay. How much of the carrots and the celery are you putting in? Usually it's about a half a cup to a cup of each of them, of the carrot celery. So like I got probably worth a cup worth of carrots and then maybe about three quarters of a cup of chopped celery that I've got. So for the celery, maybe if you have like a full one that's brand like a new celery that you've bought, I would say probably like four or five 
of the stocks of it would be more than enough for it. And then the carrots, if you're buying full carrots, I would say two decent sized carrots, not like the massive ones that we get for the work where they're like a foot long and everything, but like two like medium sized carrots should be fine. Okay, perfect. And Chris, how many are, people are you preparing this for? At the moment, it is for uh, four people. <laughs> but my son will eat most of it. Uncle Jim, do you need us to send you some? Uh, I'm waiting, yep. <laughs> Gotta fight off the Amazon guy, but yeah, I'm ready. <laughs> well, we have the, our other helper, the, the vacuum dog to come pick up anything that hits hit the floor. <laughs> right now I just have my carrot or my onion, celery, and garlic just in the pan sweating off a little bit. And then I'm gonna add my carrot to it. And then I'll cut my herbs or my sage up and my bread, and then we will add it all together after. And so for the veggies, you don't wanna overcook it or are up too high. We just want it so they all become a little translucent. Because they will be cooking again in the oven. So you don't want them to be mush. You just want them to be translucent and then it'll finish off in the oven for you. And so, so some people prefer fresh sage, other people prefer the powder. It all depends on the type, time of the year also when you're getting it, because sometimes it's hard to find uh, fresh sage in the grocery stores. I just happened to be at the Pocos the other day and I actually found some, but lately I've only been able to use the powder because I couldn't find any fresh sage. But if I have the choice, I'm going to always use fresh sage over the powdered sage. For that, it was just two bunches of fresh sage that I'm going to chop up. Or if you're going to use ground sage, it'll probably be about a tablespoon worth of ground sage. For the bread, for your stuffing, you can use any type of bread you want. I've been using just the plain white bread right now. I myself prefer a brioche bread because it's more buttery, milk bread on it. But you can I'm use anything. To hear you when you're talking. Listen to. You. The longest part of doing your stuffing is just baking it in the oven. The prep work of it only, for me, will only takes about 10, 15 minutes, but it does any normal person. <laughs> but for me, it like yeah, it doesn't take that long. But 
Show how you're cutting it. So I'm just cutting my bread just into cubes. Oops, sorry, camera person. Cameraman is, uh, I don't know what's going on with here, but I'm just cutting it into cubes right now. And then it uh, that allows the butter and all the other flavors then to get into every piece of the bread. If you even leave bigger pieces, it's gonna be harder for the middle part to actually absorb it. So I'm just cutting it into cubes. Yeah. I'm just gonna transfer this into my big bowl so I can cut some more up. And it is easier to then mix all your ingredients if you have a big bowl instead of having to try to shove everything into the frying pan when you're sauteing off your veg. So now that my veg is becoming a bit translucent, translucent, the carrots are a little firm, which is that's what I want, because then the texture of that will be in the stuffing, so you won't have it just a mushy carrot. I'm going to add my sage into it to help sweat it off a little bit and to bring out some of the flavors before we add it into the bread and fold everything together. When you add your sage, you want to probably just cook it for like a minute or so just to help bring out all those flavors from it. If you have it too high, it will start to burn it and then you'll have that burnt flavor in your stuffing, which nobody wants to have burnt flavor at all in their stuffing. Everything is just coming along very nicely. I'm just going to grab the milk. Okay. I don't know how to get it so that I don't know. I'm just grabbing some salt and pepper that I'm going to season it with. And I'm going to add it, all the veggies into my bowl with my bread. And I'm going to add some milk to it, but not a lot, just enough that it gets it damp. Because then when you bake it, that'll dry up and you'll, in your stuffing. Because if you have too much, that's one of the questions we had, it'll get soggy. You just want to add maybe not even like a quarter of a cup of milk just to help make keep it moist through the baking process. Mm 
turn it off. So everything gets mixed together. And you can add a bit of nutmeg to it to give it a little more of a nutty flavor. So you just want it a little damp. It's where you kind of squeeze it and it mushes. Any more than that, then it starts to just break down and then you're gonna have your very mushy stuffing. So you can still kind of squeeze it and then it stays together. And it's different cooking at home than it is at the hotel because at the hotel we have big convection ovens and that at home I don't have a convection oven I just have a standard uh, standard oven no gas it's electric so it is different cooking with at the hotel I would have to sort like um, parchment paper the top of it cover it with tin foil bake it and then take it off and then bake it again so that that way it cooks evenly at home because there's no convection pan you can leave it in there especially if you have a bigger pan and it'll cook nicely night sorry nicely for you as long as well everyone's oven is different some people's oven 375 degrees more feels like 400 degrees so everyone's oven kind of is a little bit different than cooking. So you just have to play around with your temperature a bit and just keep an eye on your stuffing. For the most part, this takes about 45 minutes to an hour, depending on your oven and how thick of the stuffing you make. So now that I have everything mixed together, I'm gonna take my casserole dish that I have. What size is it? <laughs> okay. <laughs> It says I, it on it. I forget what size this it's one is. On. It's a nine by 13. And I did it last time that, so it, nothing burns to it. I put a piece of parchment paper inside of it. So then you don't have the hard time of scrubbing it after. I'm As the cleaner upper, I appreciate that. Lined it with parchment. And just try to make it as level as possible with it. Because if you have too much on one side or too thick, then too thin that's when you're going to have the issues of part of it being dry or part of it being wet and so as you can kind of see like it's all nice and even like there's not a whole lot of liquid there's just enough to keep it damp from there we're just going to put it in the oven and in about 45 minutes at 375. What level do you have it on? I oh. usually put it on the top. It, ours is one up from the middle that we put it on. So it's not the very top. It's just one up from the middle that I cook mine on. And in about 45 minutes to half an hour, depending on how much I put into it, the stuffing will be done and my kids will be devouring it. 